What's up y'all, in today's video we're gonna be going over my 48 volt solar power system and then I'm gonna go over some upgrades we're going to be doing to the 48 volt solar power system. We're gonna be doing all that on this channel and I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of cool stuff in this video so stick around and let me know what y'all think. So this is how my system currently sits. We have an EG4 6500EX, we have one EG4 LL version two server rack battery and then we have our homemade Cal 180, used Cal 180 cells. And this system has been rock solid, I put over two megawatts through it. I'll show y'all real quick. Look there, we're at a megawatt and a half for output and 1.9 megawatts for input. So I put quite a bit of power through this. I run it almost every day. And I think I'm at the point now where I need to upgrade. So I have something very, very exciting to show you guys. So we're gonna go to the driveway and I'm gonna show y'all something. Also, it's time to upgrade the solar as well. So the panels are staying the same, but I am making a new mount. So I'm doing a video on that as well. This system for the last few, or for about a year now, I mean, I put this system together sometime last year. I have to look exactly. I did do a video when I built it. It's been rock solid. It works exactly how I needed it, but I, I think I'm ready to upgrade. So we're gonna go ahead and take the next step in our solar solar power adventure. This is my first foot in the water as far as a 48 volt setup. The best part about doing this journey the way I do it is I reuse as much stuff as possible and just kind of upgrade slowly as I go. That way I don't have to spend a bunch of money at once. But like I said, we're gonna go in the driveway and I'm gonna show you something very exciting. With this system here, I've been able to run two mini splits super consistently as, as well as running my mini split all night to cool my bedroom. And it's been doing a really good job. I've also been able to charge any battery I can throw at it. Any load I've ever put on this thing, it's been great. Definitely not knocking this, just time to upgrade and uh, let's see what the next thing's gonna be. All right guys, on this pallet is the next upgrade for our solar power system. So I have three boxes. I ordered all this stuff from Signature Solar. My plan is to get this all in the house, unbox each component one by one, show it to you guys, go over it, give my thoughts on it, and then that's it. And then we'll kind of go from there. But this is the next step as far as upgrading my system. And I'm very, very excited to show y'all what's in these boxes. I'm just waiting for my buddy to come over because I can't move this by myself. Dang, you're gonna have to move, buddy. Getting something big. Oh God, this thing is heavy. All my animals wanna be in here. Mm, I think that's the top. All righty. All righty, guys, box number one. Sorry about the lighting. I'm really trying my best to, I don't know, I need to get a better lighting setup in here. Anyways, we're gonna open this first box and see what's inside. Oh, it's upside down, but that's okay. I'll try to take it out like that. One piece of foam. You guys can already guess what it is. All right, I'm about to do one of these. Oh God. Oh, what a beast. Ow. All right, guys, this is the first piece to our version two solar setup. Oh yeah, she's heavy. That made a noise. Oh, it's got handles on it, nice. All right, so we have here an EG4 6000 XP. This is a 48 volt split phase inverter. So this puts out 120 and 240 volts. It has two lines and a neutral, as well as a ground, obviously. And this is gonna be a big upgrade in my system only because right now the 6500EX can only put out 120 volts single phase. It's been working great, but I'm ready to power bigger appliances and potentially my house. So 6000 XP, a little bit of specs on this. It can do 6000 watts continuous of AC output. It'll do 3000 watts per hot leg. So L1, you can do 3000, L2, you can do 3000 thousand you have to make sure you stick to that because i don't believe this load balances on its own so keep that in mind depending on how you hook your loads up you do want to kind of balance them out but that's not a problem as far as input it'll do 8,000 watts of solar up to 450 volts open circuit that's the great thing about these eg4 inverters so you can put a lot of inverters in series me personally i'm running 10 panels in series so at right about 350 volts it makes it super easy to connect all right on the front here so that's your main battery breaker so that's awesome that it has that the 6500 does not these are your that feels like it's about to break so these are your L1 and L2 out. These are your grid connections if you want to do a bypass or charging because this can also act as a charger and then you have your generator input. So that's pretty awesome. Here's your PV disconnect switch, which is also built into it, which is freaking awesome. That saves you money not having to buy that. And then right here is actually how you turn the inverter on and off. Right here, we have a port where you can connect a Wi-Fi dongle, which I do believe it comes with, and you can actually connect it to their software and make your changes remotely. You know, so I'm definitely kind of keen to try that. I want to see if I can maybe turn the inverter on remotely. You'll be able to adjust all the settings you want as far as how the inverter is going to run. It has multiple different modes and we will definitely get into that. I'm not really sure until we start messing with it, but yeah, this is the, uh, let's go ahead and take the panel off and see what the inputs look like. All right, here's what you get in the box. You get the Wi-Fi dongle, which goes on the side like I showed you all before. You get two communication cables, you get the manual. It also includes some wall anchors. And yeah, it looks like a nut or something, so. Definitely gonna have to look through that manual when we go to mess with this thing. All right, so I went ahead and removed all the screws to get this cover off so we can take a peek at the connection. So let's pop this off carefully. Yoink, put this over here. Alrighty guys, check it out. That is super slick. So right here are your two main battery inputs with the 200 amp breaker. 
This is all your communication stuff over here. Sorry, my camera's being weird. So all your communication stuff tells you what all that does. All your breakers for in and out, your neutral bus bar, a ground bus bar, and then right here are your PV inputs. And I actually bought some ferrules to use this with you. I don't think you have to use these with ferrules, but I bought some anyways. So I can make this thing as nice as possible. But yeah, super nice, super high quality. Looks very clean. I'm very excited. And then you got to figure out, so there's what the bottom looks like. As you can hear, it has those knockouts. I'm sorry, guys, my camera's being really weird. But yeah, so those, you have to knock those out yourself. And then you have to buy the actual little deals to put your wires through to make it look all clean. All right, so here's the side of you. You can see we have three cooling fans. I've also heard that this thing's really quiet compared to the 6500 because when the 6500 gets a lot of solar, it does sound like a jet's taking off. I don't personally mind it, but I think that does annoy some people. Here's a little dust filter that you can remove and clean. But yeah, guys, I'm definitely not the first to make a video on this. There's a lot of other really good videos on YouTube, so I suggest you guys check those out. I forgot to also mention one of the really good things about this is you can parallel these units. It's already split phase, so if you want to run a bigger load than 6,000 watts, you buy another unit, now you have 12,000 watts, so on and so forth. Also, this is a high frequency inverter. Keep that in mind if you're gonna run a lot of huge inductive loads you may have issues starting things personally i don't think i'm gonna have any issues because i'm not running a ton of big loads on this now what i like what i would like to try and maybe you guys can let me know if you've done this is i want to put a generator input into my house and use this as a generator input because it does 240 volts and see if i can run you know a couple loads on the house and be able to power the house up so i think that'd be something really cool to do 6,000 watts is definitely not enough to power an entire house you probably would have to get the 12k the 12k is a lot more expensive though you can have two of these and have the same output as a 12k so something to think about but any Anyways, guys, that's it for the inverter. So now let's get our next box and go see what that is. And as usual, guys, if you guys have any questions on this or want to see me do anything with it, please let me know. Obviously, I'm going to hook it up and use it. But if there's anything specifically y'all want to see or how to do certain things on this inverter, let me know and I'll help you guys figure that out. Excuse me, Charlie. Oh, my God. This thing is God. Oh, oh, God. All right. Box number two. Boom. So we got another EG4 LL version two server rack battery. These things weigh a hundred pounds. So if you buy one, be prepared for that. Communication cable, set of leads. You get a quality control checklist and it shows you all the tests they do. And this one pulled 101 amp hours. Nice. All right, I'm gonna put this on the floor and pull it out of the box. I am weak. <clears throat> All right, the second piece to our solar upgrade trifecta, I guess you could call it, is another EG4 LL version two server rack battery. I'm already running one of these. This is 5.12 kilowatt hours of capacity, 48 volts. They rate these as service life of 15 years, and I believe it has either a 10 or 15 year warranty. Don't quote me on that. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it powers up. Turn the breaker on. And then right here is the power up button. You click that and there we go. Right now it's at 55% state of charge. So not much to really say about these. They're well worth the money because you can definitely build a DIY pack cheaper than this, but you're not gonna get all the features you get with this. This has built-in fire suppression, all the you know overload, underload protection features you could want in a battery. And yeah, I've had one for a year now. Obviously I've had zero troubles. Also these can communicate with EG4 and other inverters. It uses RS-485 protocol, whatever kind of protocol you need. A lot of inverters can run these. And and you have to kind of check to see which ones, you know, if it's compatible with your inverter. But for what I'm doing, because I'm using an EG4 ecosystem, I'm not going to have any trouble. So like I said, not much more to say about this. It's rated at 100 amp output. And yeah, they're awesome. I wanted to actually go with the bigger battery because EG4 makes a 280 amp hour battery at 14 kilowatt hours, but that battery weighs almost 300 pounds. This one's 100 pounds. And what's nice about this is I can take this battery, for example, if I'm running this in parallel with my big system, I can remove this, put it with another inverter and have an on the go system. So that's kind of my mind process with that is I can take this and just take it on the go if I want to do something more portable. So that's it. Not a whole lot to show about this. I'll kind of get a close up for you guys. Yeah, this thing's super nice. The build quality is top notch. These have actually come down in price. When they first came out, they were kind of a, you know, about 1700 bucks. Now you can pick them up for about 1300. So if you go through here, let me see. And you can actually see each individual cell voltage. And then you can click it again and actually see the BMS and all the cell temperatures. So as you can see, it has four temperature sensors for the cells and one temperature sensor for the BMS board itself. So yeah, that's it. Not like I said, not really much more to say about the battery. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory if you've messed with this stuff for a little while. I'm super happy. So now total, I have two of these and one homemade cowl pack. I should have at least 15 kilowatt hours of capacity. I do derate my cowl pack just a little bit because they're used cells. But with just these two server rack batteries that I have, I'll have at least 10 kilowatt hours. And I do believe that's plenty of capacity for for now obviously more is better but for what i'm doing with it we're good to go and then there's the sticker on the side for any of you guys interested 
So yeah, guys, super, super excited to have this. When I run my mini splits at night, I tend to use about half the pack I have now. So this should be able to extend my run time. My plan is I, I definitely want to keep getting more batteries. I think at this point, that's kind of my focus is batteries. I think the inverter is going to be good for what I need. But anyways, let's get this out of the way. And I have one more box to show you guys. Alrighty, y'all, one more box to crack open. Alrighty, so what we have here, I'm super excited for. All right, guys, what we have here is what's called a charge verter. Now, the, basically, this is just a big battery charger. Essentially, it can put out five kilowatts of battery charging power at 48 volts. Fully adjustable, fully programmable, which is awesome. That way you don't have to put out the full 5,000 watts if you don't need it. It runs on 120 and 240 volts, but it comes with this big beefy cable. So I do want to try this on 120, so I'm going to have to make an adapter. But the nice thing about this is if you want to just top up your battery bank, you know, when it's cloudy outside or not getting a whole lot of sun, you can connect this directly to the grid or you can connect it directly to a standard non inverter generator because normally you would not want to use that style of generator on your solar power system because the power coming out of those is normally really dirty and with this is able to handle that and produce clean DC voltage so like I said on days when it's like cloudy or rainy or you're just not getting any solar you can use this to keep your battery bank topped up and there's not very many chargers on the market that are this powerful that'll do five kilowatts at 48 volts as far as what you get in the bag you get the power adapter like I just showed you guys you get the DC cables with these I believe they're called Amphenel connectors and then it has ring terminals on the other side so my my plan is to probably put an Anderson plug that way I can plug and unplug it from the battery bank and have a permanent set of cables mounted. It also came with these, looks like a some sort of communication cable and then a USB to a communication cable. So I'm not sure what that's about. Actually, look, this is not terminal, but it comes with this one. So I'm assuming you can plug this thing in and do firmware updates or maybe mess with the settings. Uh, not entirely sure. So we're definitely going to mess with that, but I'm really excited to have this. The biggest thing too, if you're using your inverter and let's say a lot of inverters have built in chargers, but you cannot use the charger and invert the power. You have to do one of the other because that's how just the circuits work on a lot of inverters so this will be nice because i can still run the inverter and i can top up my batteries with any kind of power source i want and that really opens the door you know to a lot of variety of how you can charge your battery bank you know generator whatever it doesn't really matter or off the grid you know if you just want to do that but just wanted to show you guys real quick i'm very happy to get this this was actually on sale too because i bought a server rack battery this was 320 bucks and normally these are close to you know 500 kind of a good deal in my book anyways guys that's going to do it for today's video let me know what you're more excited to see and yeah i'm mean, really excited to put this stuff to the test and just kind of you know mess with it and power some stuff really with just this setup right here just this inverter and this battery if you add solar panels you have a you have an off-grid solar power system right there that's literally how easy it is they make it super easy these days so that's awesome let me know what you guys want to see if you made it to the end of the video you're the best in a future video we're going to be hooking all this stuff up i'm going to have to modify the power court we already built i'm going to take the 6500 off this is going to go on and more than likely with the 6500 ex i'm going to build a more portable smaller setup that way i can wheel that thing around and have power on the go but this is going to be my new new stationary setup to replace the 6500. I'm gonna have to rebuild the breaker box, put a 240 plug, all that good stuff. So I will do videos on all that. So I guess that's it. I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. That was cringy. I probably won't use that.